You're listening to Sarah Hagen backstage with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen backstage. My guest today, Fausto Cuevas III, is an incredible percussionist who has made some amazing music and had huge gigs with artists like Stevie Wonder, Britney Spears, and Jennifer Lopez. We are going to talk about his start in music, the artist who shaped his playing, his journey as a musician, and his ability to always stay positive. So come along with me as I catch up with Fausto Cuevas III. Fausto, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Good I'm you. good. How are you? Oh, it's so good to see you too. How are you doing? Well, it's hot. It's hot in California. Man, we've been going through some serious heat wave. Uh, you know, it's been amazing. It's been crazy hot. and It's been good. I've been good, you know, trying to survive. Yeah, I know. Aren't we all, right? <laughs> it's been crazy times. And I, I know, you know, we, we've talked a bit throughout quarantine and throughout the whole pandemic and all of that. But how, how did you get through that time period? Well, um, you know, I started teaching a lot. I started uh, getting um, a lot of fans and just people who just say, hey, you know, do you teach? I'm like, sure, you know, and started doing exactly what we're doing now. And it's it really was really remarkable, you know, that I was able to uh, just do interviews and 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 and, and gain. I, I think I was teaching like eight or nine students around the world at one time, you know, like you know, during, during the quarantine and, you know, also just, um, yeah, I mean, that, you know, just doing that and, 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 uh, kept, you know, recording. I, I started getting a lot of uh, work called for, for some, some movies and, you know, TV shows and things like that, which was really, really great. You know, um, and other than that, just never lose the faith. Uh, that's what yeah. I, I always, always say, no matter what, Man, just keep doing it. Drum every day. Do it hard. Love it. Just don't ever stop. Right. I learned I learned what. So I started I started body strengthening um, recently. And I I actually train with an 85 year old man, 69 year old woman, 66 year old guy. And my trainer is 73 years old. So the wow. most remarkable thing about this is to see how the human body, we're resilient. It's, we don't know how incredible we all are. So this, uh, this uh, 85 year old man, his name is Don. He was, uh, you know, I was telling him just things that are, that I'm doing. And, you know, he knows that I'm a musician and stuff like that. And he looked at me the other day and he says, keep going. Don't ever stop. And don't let the old man in. And I was like, wow. Wow, that was incredible. So that mentality is just the philosophy of, of, of doing it. I've always done it with drums, you know. Um, my journey with drums started really, well, probably for, mo for, for some people, probably late. But I knew when I was three what I wanted to do, and that's play drums for who or for what. And it was more, more drum set than percussion. And uh, man, you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't care. I didn't know what I was doing when I went to I went to San Jose State University uh, to try to be uh, my dad wouldn't let me do anything but be a, a, a music ed major. Did I knew really quick that that wasn't for me. Wow. Bad, bad choice. So then going to Berkeley, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea, but I just did it anyway. And that was the best thing that I could ever do in my life is move to Boston you know, and uh, that was, that was unbelievable for, for me, you know? So uh, that was, that's kind of like the whole thing, right? Just, I just did it. I just didn't know. I couldn't see on the other side. I right. just knew that this was what I had to do. So that's kind of how I, you know, got I think, through, COVID, through that whole pandemic, just, you know? Yeah. Just, just pushed, but just pushed, right. Push your way through it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We got to just be here and then we'll get out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was it. You know? That's amazing. And, and speaking of your time at Berkeley too, 
Um, you studied with El Negro, right? And, and Giovanni. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Is, is that how you kind of like made your way? Cause you talked about playing drum set and everything is, was it your time at Berkeley that kind of like forged your path to percussion? Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm from a really, you know, well, I'm from Brownsville, Texas. That's where I was born and raised. So back in, when I was a kid, there was nobody teaching drum set or jazz or any of that. So um, I ended up, you know, getting to Berkeley. And then funny thing is, you know, I wanted to be a, a, a jazz drummer. I was wanted to be just like, I was into jazz and to pop and this whole thing. And I even, the it's, I have a funny event that happened when I was at Berkeley. I used to work for the percussion department and I was going to work and um, I came into the Boylston building and it had two recital halls, a smaller one and a bigger one, right? So this, mm -hmm. I was passing by the smaller one and I see this short dude and then this little, this taller black guy and I'm like, and all these people were in there and everyone's like, ah, oh, and I look in there and I'm like, it didn't interest me. It just so happened to be Giovanni Hidalgo and Jose Luis Quintana Changuito on that stage. And wow. because I wasn't, I didn't know about, I wasn't into Latin music at that time. I really hadn't been hit with the whole incredible vibe of, of, of that drum, of a conga drum or, you know, mm -hmm. and bongos and stuff like that. So um, I never forget that, wow, here it is, right? So then a couple of weeks later, I come down to the to the basement of that building and I hear this just incredible, like, conga's amazing. Of course, I open the door and who's there? Giovanni Dalgo, practicing. Amazing. Practicing. And he goes, he looks at me, he goes, uh, uh, you, you play, you play songo? And I'm like, a mm, little bit. <laughs> and so I sat down and we played for hours, man. We just played. It was just, I'm, I'm keeping time. And I didn't really know who he was at that time. He was just incredible. Mm -hmm. But that, that's the magic of, 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 of him and, and, and guys like Horacio. And they don't know they're, they're just, they just, they love to play drums. They're, my my T-shirt says it says sin tambor no hay vida and that's without drum without the drum there's no life and I came up with that sitting in my hotel room uh, in Vegas waiting you know I did that Jennifer Lopez uh, Planet Hollywood um, residency residency from 2016 to 2018 and I was just just hit me you know just like sitting looking out the window it's like wow it's incredible, like where the drum has taken me, you know, mm -hmm. what a blessing it's been. And I, I, Horacio lives it. Giovanni lives it. Antonio Sanchez lives it. Vinny Kali, every, we all, you live and we all live it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. So that's what I, I, I learned from, from them, you know, that, wow, how powerful is that? You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's like a, a common theme among the the players in this industry just the passion and the need to play and you know you like you just mentioned you played for hours right with giovanni it, it and any any of these guys you you know you could just it makes you happy like you could just sit down and play for hours and hours and hours and be so happy be so happy doing it be so happy afterward you know so fulfilled and um, I love that. I love that about this community. Like, it's just, it's all passion. It's just filled it with passion. And, and I know you have that tattoo on your forearm, right? As well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Sin tambor no hay vida. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, it was so, it was so deep because, man, you know, like I said, I'm from a small town in Texas where not a lot of people leave, you know, we don't really, mm -hmm. we always stay home and stay with family and it's just that kind of a uh, community. And, and I just was ready, you know, by the time I was approaching 18, I was sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you knew what you wanted to do. Oh man. Yeah. And it had to be not stay there, you know? Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with there with Brownsville. It just wasn't for me. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing place to grow up. Mm -hmm. I had the best, you know, childhood uh, upbringing, but it's definitely a different world, you know, and my world was not that. So, you know, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, you knew, you knew you needed to expand, you know, you needed to kind of like grow beyond 
and um and to do what you do now and what you've done for the past decades you had you had to do that you had to go yeah exactly about and and next you i think of just you being like one of the top percussionists in the world and um the your style of playing and and all of that and like the, the afro cuban style and i'm wondering if you have you been to cuba for i'm sorry have you have you ever been to cuba i have yes have i've been there a couple times and it's uh it's uh it's one of the most incredible places on earth i I invite everybody whether you're into Afro-Cuban drumming or music or not doesn't matter. It is a very amazing place. Very spiritual, very just the life there is amazing. It all revolves around music, it all revolves around arts, it all revolves around the culture. It's such a beautiful place. The people are beautiful, incredible people, you know, and uh it's just a it's just amazing, you know. The first time I went to Cuba, we actually uh, um my buddies and I at Berkeley, we started a band called La Timba Loca. My compadre Gonzalo Grau, we started a band called La Timba Loca. And um, it's now called Gonzalo Grau y La Clave Secreta. And we're turning 25 next year. Wow. So we're currently, um, we're currently about to release our third record. And uh, we got nominated for a Grammy on our second record. And um, it's just this incredible, incredible band. And so in 2003, Isaac Delgado, who's a, a big uh, a Cuban singer, and he saw the band in Boston and in New York, and he just went, you got to come. So he brought us to Cuba to do the Benny More Music Festival. And man, you talk about, you talk about pressure. Yeah, I bet. I mean, here we are, you know, from, you know, in the States and we're basically dissecting Cuban music, you know, and learning it like just mm -hmm. like total, you know, and uh, um, man, we went to Cuba and we opened up for some of the biggest names in, in, in Latin music today. And it was like, we're opening, we opened up for Pupi, Los Que Son Son and the form Los Bamban. We also opened for Los Bamban. And these guys were all standing behind us, like watching us and like, it's it pretty crazy. But it was a, one of the greatest experiences ever just to see do that. And it was amazing. So, That's yeah. Fantastic. And, and yeah. you know, the the acts that you've played with are so diverse, you know. So you you have the, these bands that you've that you've been in, like you said, for 25 years. And then you have been out on the road with huge, huge acts. I mean, we wonder Britney Spears and you mentioned Jennifer Lopez and um I think that maybe the first time I saw you play was with Stevie Wonder. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Was yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, I amazing. That night was one of the most incredible nights I've ever experienced in my life. And I know we've talked about this before, but, and I, I think I've talked about it on this podcast, that show um, was so moving. Like the show was incredible. First of all, you, and Stanley Randolph on drum set and the musicianship was just incredible throughout. Um, and then after the show, we were backstage and you remember, like, I, do you remember what happened? Right? Like it was, when, it was crazy with, with Stevie coming out and like playing keyboard. Oh well, yeah. Right. I mean, and of course. Yeah. Everybody's and waiting to be, and he's playing and talking to everybody. He's like doing another show. Yes. Another show backstage, and then there was a little boy there, and he was like, um, he was also blind. He was blind, and I think he was he was maybe mute, right? Like he he didn't speak, and he was playing this keyboard beautifully. Isn't she lovely? He was playing, and he was humming because even though he doesn't speak, he would like hum the music perfectly in tune. Um, and Stevie came over and played with him, and I think like we all were crying. Like it was just, everybody was, like, everybody was just like, <laughs> like, like, what is happening? They're so surreal. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. That was, that was incredible. You know, that show, I have to say that band being a part of that Stevie wonder band in 2007, you know, all the way, you know, to date that band and Stevie is just 
it, it's what we learn when we when we start growing up and you know like listening to jazz, listening to you know like studying at Berkeley and you know all of these things. We 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 get to the point where we're like. We're going to play and we're going to create and we're going to really play. And that's what that guy is. That's what Stevie Wonder is, the epitome of creation, mm -hmm. epitome of, of just, you know, pouring his soul out into a song. And it's that guy's incredible. And that's what I learned on that. I mean, coming together with Manobo Jackson on percussion, Stanley Randolph, you know, um, Errol Cooney, Roman Johnson, Victoria mm -hmm. Theodore. Uh, at that time, it was... Uh, it was Morris O'Connor, and then it was um, Kyle Bolden, and then we had uh, uh, Dwight on uh, on trumpet, and we had um, uh, saxophone. He's gonna kill me, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Kilgore. <laughs> hey, I'm about to be fifty, guys. Can't give me. <laughs> so anyway, but you know, and, and, and Stevie, Nate Watts, come on, Nate, Nate Watts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I remember that. You yeah. ever see somebody be so funky playing quarter notes? No, quarter it was. Notes. That dude. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is incredible. And, and I think that that's the one thing about that gig that's so spoiling that mm. it's just, you don't ever know what you're going to play. Mm -hmm. In front of 150, 200,000 people, five people. Uh, it doesn't matter how many people. It's just you just go up there, and he's, Stevie's ready. Let's go, and it's mm -hmm. let's go for three hours, three and a half hours, four. Hours, it doesn't matter, and it's just always different, and it's just always incredible, you know. Yes. So yeah. That's just you know that that's what that gig is. You don't you're not there for the fireworks. You're mm -hmm. not there for the dancing. You're not there for the acrobatics. No, you see a piano. With the with the you know with the keyboard and then you know mm -hmm. the clap and then his drum set and then just a whole bunch of instruments you know and yeah. and that's like wow you know no tracks we don't have any tracks guys you know yeah. no eighty twenty no <laughs> eighty pro tools twenty band no bullshit yeah. it's straight up you hear it it got played it's not mm -hmm. from any the only thing is like there's some ocean sounds. And bird sounds in overjoyed. That's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people people ask the question like if if I'm having a conversation or in in, in an interview where I'm I've been interviewed, the question like, oh, what is the best concert you've ever been to? Like that kind of thing, and and that stands out to me. That that show is right up there. It just was absolutely incredible and you know i got to spend time with you and stanley who i just love and we met stevie and it was just my gosh like what an amazing night um but and i think we had met maybe a couple years before that we were talking before we pressed record about how long we've known each other and figured out it's been 20 years 20 years 20 years yeah <laughs> crazy I, I think i had hair <laughs> Hair at that time. You posted yeah. a you posted a picture recently of your hair with long oh hair, God. right? Man, I used to have hair down to here. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, those are my uh, those are my Sam Houston State University drumline kind of, you know. Amazing. Pictures. You know, I was very influenced by Dave Weckl during that time. So if you look at the picture, the drum set was just exactly like Weckl's kit. With the floor tom with the hi hat and the whole thing, you know. Wow. You know, so, yeah. I'll yeah. have to go take. I'll have to go take a look at that. I just uh, Dave, um, his interview was last week. I just interviewed him, so um, it's great to catch up with him. And the my the number of drummers that he influenced, I can only. I mean, I was highly influenced by him, and I, just, you know, in the '90s, it was like if you were a drummer, you were a Dave yeah. Buckle fan. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I remember, you know, being at Berkeley at that time, I mean, it was everybody. It was Weckl, Vinny, Vinny Cayuta, and Steve Gadd. Gad. Dennis Chambers. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Dennis Chambers. Dennis. I mean, it was just like that was the blueprint of what was happening at that time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? To hear, to hear Dave talk about how he was so influenced by Steve Gadd. That was like 
mind blowing to me, you know, because I kind of like I the same thing that you you said, like those are those are the guys. And it was just, um, you know, to hear that Dave was like influenced by Steve Gadd and he actually like wrote letters to Peter Erskine. And I was like, really, that's incredible to me just to think about, you know, someone like him and who he was influenced by. Um, I always love to have those conversations and um, I'm sure. Yeah. That, like, at that, at that time, it was just those, those were the guys, those are still the guys too, of course, but um, unbelievable. It's amazing. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. And um, you know, so, so the Stevie gig I'm sure was, we've talked a little bit about this before, but so you, you know, talk about like everything is, live on stage and there's no tracks and all of that. And then to go to a gig like the Britney gig or the JLo gig, where it's more like of a, a stage show, like the show part of it is such a, such a big deal. Um, that had to be, it had to be a different, like a, a, quite a transition to be playing percussion for that kind of a thing. Yeah. That, you know, I have to say uh, the Britney Spears gig, uh, that was my first like huge, like world, just crazy tour like mm -hmm. pulled up to a to a hotel and there's thousands of people that are you know hundreds of people that are camping out just, just to see you things it was crazy and um funny thing i was just talking to you know teddy campbell he was the md on that tour and uh man i learned so much from that guy and just to see how that music how pop music that level of pop music is approached and played, you know, and I mean, it was, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, you also have to, I learned a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of patience on that mm -hmm. tour, you know, because you have all these great instruments, all these brand new, everything you want and you want to play everything, you, but, 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 you know, I learned about playing parts, you know, on that tour where, you know, it may, it may have been like electronics, just electronics, you know? So um, yeah. that was, that was incredible. You know, not wanting to play acoustic, but having to play electronics and kind of, kind of trying to, to get with that. Cause I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not all gung ho about electronics, but I right. learned, I learned how they fit into it and you know, how you can't technically do so much with a, with the shaker or no mm -hmm. matter what, but you know you're you're playing some pretty complex things or you know just parts that are are different with electronic pads and I learned that and I learned a lot of different styles on that tour and you know Teddy helped me out kind of just kind of understand it and it was it was really great you know really really great and then you go from there you know to play with like a you know with the Stevie Wonder and it's completely opposite even though that I did have electronics on, on Stevie's, but it was able to just enhance certain things to mm -hmm. make the funky stuff sound a little bit more funkier with some claps or, you know, but everything was played and, and, uh, and it wasn't just like, I didn't just play electronics on one song. It was a lot of, mm -hmm. obviously a lot of acoustic stuff. And, um, you know, and then there's JLo, which her gig was really, really diverse as far as like, you're playing, everybody thinks Jennifer Lopez, you're thinking Latin, but mm -hmm. really not so much. You know, a lot of 90s R&B, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, uh, kind of soul stuff as well. And then some country. And then you got the Latin stuff and then you got the EDM stuff. Right, right. You know, so it's a yeah. lot of different, a lot of different flavors in one and with one artist and you, you know, that lear right. learning what to do where, that's the most important, you know, you know, that's, that's really the, the most important thing when you're on those kind of gig, you know, that kind of a gig. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I can, I can only imagine that, you know, like the, the diverse and actually with, with Britney too, I mean, like generally pop, but she has, I'm thinking she has songs that are, that are diverse in, in style as well too. So um, yeah. 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 That, that's true. yeah that, that Onyx hotel tour, you were playing a little bit of some go-go. Then we were doing some, you know, some jazzy stuff and, and you know, mm -hmm. did a little bit of Latin stuff and some reggae. Yeah, you were actually, yeah, absolutely. You know, that was a long time ago, 2004. 
I, I know. I remember talking to you about that. Just, just about how like, it's interesting to play for an artist who's also like an entity, right? So like, yes, Britney Spears is a human, right? That's her name. But it's also this like, really large entity, like the, <laughs> that exists out there. And that was really fascinating to me. Um, to talk with you about and JLo too, like her brand, the brand is huge, right? Like, yeah, that, yeah that's, that's amazing. That's yeah. Crazy. Amazing. Can I share one Britney Spears story with you? Yeah, and everybody? I love that. Absolutely. This is a really true story regarding Britney. Cause first yeah. of all, she's a sweet, she's a sweetheart. She is a sweet girl. And um, so we started the European leg in 2004 and we started, we landed in London and then we had to go to Scotland. So I was, I got sick. I had fever. I had the, like a flu. So I was having a hard time. So then Brittany's masseuse was also an acupuncturist. So she says, hey, we were in, in Scotland. She says, show up early to the venue. So Brittany's masseuse acupuncturist was right next door to her dressing room. Mm -hmm. Show up early and I'll do some acupuncture to open up your, your sinuses so you can breathe better and play. And I'll say, okay, cool. So I show up, get all that done, great. So as I'm leaving her room, I'm walking down this long hall, and all of a sudden, Brittany turns the corner with her two big old, you know, bodyguards, really mm -hmm. some guys, huge, and uh, we're gonna pass each other up. And she says, she says, "Hey, Fausto." I'm like, "Hey, Brittany." She goes, "You know what? Does I really love your hair?" And I said, "Yeah." She goes, "I want to get my hair." I want to cut my hair like yours. I thought she was joking. And then I said, really? I'll cut your hair? And she goes, no, really, I do. I said, Brittany, can I ask you why you want to cut your hair? Yeah. This is a story. This is what you don't see on television. They think that she was crazy. So right. that girl, she puts her head down and she shows me her hair. She had thousands she had of knots, thousands of knots in her hair. She goes, I can't, she goes, comb I hair. can't comb my hair. I can't brush my hair. Brush my hair. all this stuff. And it was driving her crazy. Oh, and no. Now, so, so, so you cut, from you cut, from the extension. You cut out there a little bit. You cut out there a little bit, Fausto, but you said she had thousands of knots, knots in her hair. Yeah. yeah from, from the extensions, you know, they put those extensions in. So yes. You take them off or whatever her hair. So she, she was just. She was over. She just wanted a break, you know. Yeah, so that, yeah. She took the, you know, she took the the, the clippers. Mm -hmm. That whole thing. Oh my God, Britney Spears is crazy, but she actually had a reason. That is, I mean, I lived that, you know, with her. That's wow. crazy. That, that, you know, wasn't necessarily that she was crazy. She was just tired, tired of yeah. the whole industry, tired of that, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I think we we had a conversation about that too, about like how growing up in this industry, like literally from a child and, you know, you're, you are, everyone's making money off of you really. Like you're, you are a lot of people's income yeah, and yeah. how we're, much we're. pressure that must be and how just, uh, how much that must weigh on someone. Um, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's so interesting. How long after that happened, was it that she buzzed her, her head? Do you remember? Um, well, we finished the European leg and then, um, we had some time off and then we're supposed to start all the, sh the sheds, uh, mm -hmm. in the summer, but mm -hmm. we didn't get, she was doing a video in uh, New York and I think she fell and she hurt her knee and they just called it. So we were supposed oh, to be yeah. out for like, 15 to 18 months and we only ended up mm -hmm. doing four. Oh wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's that is so interesting. Well, I do I don't blame her for wanting all of that out of off of her head, you know? <laughs> like that's that's a lot. But yeah, you, know, you just you know, you just get tired after a while. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. So, well, you know, I mean it's just your your uh touring history has just been incredible like we just talked about and um and you also have, like, through that time, have made some products that are incredible as well. And I don't want to talk about those because you have signature products with LP and with you have some uh, signature Timbali sticks with with Promark, right? And um, 
I just wanted to talk a little bit about that because your your bongos and your congas are really unique. They're fiberglass, right? They're fiberglass. Yeah, they're they're part of the LP Galaxy family, and um, I changed um, I changed the um, the the rim. Yeah, I, I went back to the the first rim, the first comfort curve that's puts everything really not it's not extended, so it just makes everything really tight mm -hmm. and. It, really great. And then uh, also the bottom, I put um, like a, like a, almost like a rubber shoe. That's very thick. It's not just covering the bottom. There's no metal rim. So it's really a thick shoe. So anytime that, you know, some of the challenges that, that percussionist congueros go through when we have to play or record, sometimes there's a lot of carpet. And when you put a conga on, on a carpet, the one that's right in front of you is tilted forward. So the sound can come out still it still is the sound does, you know, is a little bit dampened with the carpet, but the one to the right or the left, those are sitting flat. So they are completely just, it's like putting a towel over it and hitting it. So it's just very dead. So right. there's no, you know, it doesn't resonate. So what I did is I put this, this, this thick rubber sole on the conga. That way when it's on carpet, it it's, it's a resonator. So the rubber allows the vibration of the of the sound, just sound wave, just to, you know. And if you're on regular floor, any tile or any concrete, or it's super. The projection is incredible. That's so, so great. Yeah, yeah. I, I really those those um the I had thought of that of that product like ten. Well, now I mean I'm talking about like when I was on the tour with on tour with. Queen Latifah and, you know, and, and getting to Stevie Wonder had already envisioned this, this product line, you know, I had already mm -hmm. thought like, I wanted the whole idea. It's called, um, Foster was the third LP galaxy signature. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was about bringing an arena, the arena sound to a drum to mm -hmm. that way. Anybody can have that kind of projection, that kind of sound from drums. Right. So like, you know, thinking about like John Bottoms, like this to light kit that was like you hit that bass drum and you can hear it in another country. That it was mm -hmm. that whole thing. Like here I am in this arena, I play these arenas and man, I can hit the drum and you can just—it's just huge. Yes. Like how do we get that in a drum that just anybody can buy at a store and then just show up to their gig, whether it be at a restaurant or at a church or at a festival, and just have that automatic sound without having to kill your hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That's what, you know, that was, that was the concept of it. The, the kind of arena sound in for congas and, and bangos and my timbal, super proud of all these instruments. The timbal is a 14 inch macho, which is a smaller drum and then a 16 inch. And that's the first timbal set in the history of Latin percussion. That is a 14, 16. Wow. Everything is either 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, or 15, 16, which are known as thunder, thunder tims. And there, and then the thunder tims have shells that are really long, really, really, deep. Yeah. you know, but mine are, are six and a half inches, you know, just like, and just standard, but the, the low drum is an inch bigger. So I have 14, 16, even, even sizes, which the tuning is much easier. You know, and it's yeah. it's really, really great. You know, and I chose not to do top tuning on any of my instruments because I've actually had a problem with top tuning before where, you know, yeah, it may be more convenient, but at the same time, when you're in the middle of a show and something happens, whether it's pyrotechnics, changing the heads of the drums or weather, whatever, I did have to get to the timbal. But of course, when your bells, cowbells are all set up, there's right. One that's under the cowbell and you can't get it with top tuning. So I said, you know what, without having to do, you know, everything, I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep it traditional. That way when mm -hmm. I'm playing, I can actually tune while I'm playing if I need to and mm -hmm. get around and do it. So that was the whole idea of keeping everything traditional because, you know, if it ain't broke. Right. No, that's so, that's so great. And I, it just kind of like speaks to your seriousness about sound. Right. And we've had many conversations over the years when I was at Zildjian about cymbal sounds and needs and, you know, where where things are at and where they need to go. And I just appreciate that about you very much. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, I, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and uh, I think that once like a drummer changes over to being a timbali player or, you know, every timbalero, every drummer that's playing in this Latin music, you have to learn congas. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, you just have to. There's no, remember, the first instrument was, the drum set is actually the youngest of the family, you know, bangos, congas, timbal, and the drum set. But you, all of the richness of the, of the essence of Latin music, you know, lies in the folklore and it lies in the congas and the bangos and all of that. So I think it's when you have to go from playing sticks to actually playing, you know, what you call skin on skin, skin. you know, mm -hmm. everything, carries, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Your hands, absolutely. So you want to make it as easy as you can with the instrument that you, 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 you choose to have that projection, not have to play so hard, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that makes a, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it, it just, um, it just makes sense. It's just great. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, um, and, you know, I, I want to mention something else about you that I really appreciate, and that's your positivity. Um, I always love talking with you because I come out of the conversation feeling great. You have, you know, that the saying that's on your shirt, the tattoo that's on your arm. Um, you posted something recently on Instagram with a caption that I thought was beautiful. And I just want to read that because it was really great. It was, accept your past without rex. Handle your presence with handle your present with confidence. Face your future without fear. I thought that was fantastic. I was like, yes, Fausto. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, man, I have to tell you, I think we were talking earlier. I, I've never known what was gonna happen with me, you know, never in my mm -hmm. life. You know, like I said, my my family are all they're all chefs. My my they all I grew up in restaurant, the restaurant industry and Man, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, you know, all I know is that drumming was what was for me. And I knew it at a very young age. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I hear some of my students or some people who want like, you know, you, you know, you think I can, you know, do it or like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, if you can think it, it it's, it's possible, right? You know, yeah. now being scared doesn't help anything or anyone because it's actually you that are blocking that, that path that, that, uh, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, we don't ever know, you know, the, the, the famous saying like, well, grass ain't, how do you know the grass isn't greener on the other side? How do you know? Right. How, how do you know if you don't go? That's so true. You know, if I would have never been like gone to Boston, I didn't know anybody in Boston. My family was like, what are you doing? Going yeah. to Boston. Well, you, well, who's there? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody's there. I mean, right? I don't know. But you know, and that was the whole deal is that you know, you can't, you just gotta go forward. If it's yeah. for you, it's for you. Nobody can ever, nobody can ever take anything away from you. Not a gig, not a job, not nothing. If it if you were there and you're not anymore, it's because you're growing. Something else is on the other side, right? The grass. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. And we, and we have to grow. We have we have to grow for for ourselves. As yeah. scary as it can be, sometimes you know we just you have you have to you have to um, break out of a situation to understand like what the possibilities are. I think, exactly. and it, it shows with you like leaving your hometown and going across the U.S. and. Um, you know, starting your musical journey in that way, in a new way. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people ask me about like the change after Zildjian. And for me, it was, it was one of those moments where I was like, okay, this is a chance for me to grow um, and, and do something new. And similarly, what, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to start a business. Okay. You know, or I'm going to start a podcast. I was like, okay, <laughs> but it's, what if that's what you have your heart set on and you push as hard as you have to do to make it happen, then you're right. No one can take that away. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And, you know, it's funny because, you, you know, you say like, you know, all the time that you, the only place that I knew you from where I met you was at Zildjian. So like, 
when that whole thing happened, everyone's like, what just happened? But but to see what happened, I mean, look at the growth. I mean, you're unbelievable. You're doing it. And, and that's, you know, I'm in a similar situation where right now, you know, Stevie's not touring. You know, I'm not working with Jennifer Lopez anymore. Queen Latifah is being the the equalizer on television. She's doing incredible, and that's unbelievable. Yeah. But now, you know, I'm I'm actually about to release my first couple singles. You know, I'm finally getting my 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 my, my product out there. My my uh, my first record. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm really excited about that. And you know, it it's yeah. finally that moment where like, wow, it's here. You know, yeah, and- you're doing your thing now, which is uh, amazing. Yeah. And and tell us too about the gigs that you have. You have a, a running Monday night gig, right? Yeah, absolutely. At uh, there's this uh, this world renowned venue in in Hollywood called El Floridita Restaurant. It's a Cuban restaurant, and uh, I started playing there in 2002, and it's been 20 years that I've been playing there. Monday nights, it's the most famous, popular night in that place where all the the who's who of dancing and this stuff, everybody that's industry wise, like uh, all the musicians, all the dancers know that Monday night in LA is, you know, El Floridita. And uh, um, there used to be um, a band leader who passed on named Johnny Polanco. That's where I, I joined his band in 2002. And, you know, I played with him there for 17 years, man. Then he, you know, he, he passed on. And so now I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now carrying the, the torch holding the torch of that night and, and, uh, and keeping it in the same vein and just, you know, it's been, it's really great. It's really fun. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, you know, great food, great, you know, great hang, the ambiance, you know, celebrities, you know, whatever. It's just all, it's really, really great place. So I invite everybody to go to El Florida restaurant every Monday night <laughs> in, 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 in Hollywood, in California, if you're here. It's, it's a lot of fun. We have a, a, a great, great, uh, great time there. And um, I'm also doing a couple of other projects. I, I'm doing a, a band. I started a band called Tribute to the Greats. So it's okay. basically Stevie Wonder's band without Stevie Wonder. Um, you know, Stanley's playing and uh, Errol Cooney and Roman Johnson. At times we have Victoria Theodore. Um, Yo, hey, we've had Brandon Brown with us. We've had uh, uh, Will Burkhead. Who uh, was on with uh, with J Lo and mm-hmm. uh, Chris Gray on trumpet and uh, Peter Ortega on uh, on saxophone? Who did the songs "Key of Life" with Stevie? And then mm-hmm. my wife Lanisha is singing. Lanisha Latimer Cuevas is singing, and uh, Andre Washington is also singing. And Aaron Stevenson, which we all share the stage with uh, with uh, Jennifer Lopez. So it's great because we uh, we basically our foundation is Stevie songs. But we also pay tribute to like this next show that we're doing on the 29th of September is uh, Stevie and Aretha, Tina Marie and Prince. So it's really, really, really good because the level, the quality of the music. And I mean, it's all people who are the A-listers in the industry. So it's just Mm -hmm. a whole other, you know, interpretation, you know. So it's been really, really great. We've done, I think we've done, this will be our fourth show this year. And we do wow. it at a venue in Ventura called the the Great, mm-hmm. and it's probably one of the best jazz clubs that we have in, in California right now. You know, if not the best, and it's unbelievable. So this is a ten piece band that goes and just man, it is killing. So I bet, I bet it is. I'm 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 hearing it in my head. <laughs> I can only <laughs> imagine, and I'm hoping that uh, next time I get out there, I can catch you. At yeah, one of the yeah. gigs, but I'll put some links in the description um, and in the podcast notes on the podcast platform so people can find all that info because I'm sure both bands are just fantastic. And yeah, I'm yeah, a little yeah. bit jealous that I'm way across the country right now. Uh, <laughs> well, next time you go, you got to let me know when you're here. And, you know, we'd love to to have you. You know, we all have dinner and, you know, definitely got your show. And it's it's really we keeping that torch crew going, that, you know, that, that quality, that the way we approach it with Stevie and with everybody else, we, we approach it, you know, here live in any venue. And, you know, it's no different playing for 250,000 people or playing to two people. It's mm-hmm. the same. So that's it's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And, and also when your album comes out, how can people find that? I'm going to, 
put it out on uh, probably all the platforms and everything. I'm, I'm, I'm still looking into everything, but it'll be on everything. It'll be on Spotify, Apple music, you know, on, on, on everything. And I'll, I'll do a, uh, you know, let everybody know. Uh, as a matter of fact, why don't we do this, Sarah? Why don't we pick a date, a release date on here? Oh my goodness. Pick a release date right now. Let's do okay. that. I love that. <laughs> Late September 13th. Yes. So we yes. shoot for the 13th of October. I think that's a great day. All right. October 13th it is. October 13th. You heard it here first. So <laughs> the song is Unidos con mi tambor. And that means united through my drum. Amazing. That sounds beautiful. I, I'm excited for that for sure. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure all the drummers listening are excited for it too. Anything that you put out is always so great, Fausto. And, um, you, so you know, much. I look forward to seeing you play again in person soon. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, I, I can't, you know, it's going to be nice. So hopefully, you know, if you're over here or if I'm ever in, in Boston, you know, it'd be awesome. Which that, that should be coming soon. We're starting uh, my compadre Gonzalo and I was also the, this new product that we have, this new CD that's coming out is phenomenal. So we put a lot of blood, sweat and tears behind it and it's incredible. So um, yeah, we'll, 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 you catch me here or there. Yes. You know, one way or another, we'll see each other soon. I'm sure. And then October 13th, Unidos con mi tambor is going to be out. So love it. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, look for that. We'll absolutely look for that. And again, I'll, I'll link to all your social um, platforms and your your uh, tours, your your dates, your your live shows, because anyone who's in the area has got to go out and see you play. Um, and and also like have some great Cuban food too, because oh my God, that, so that food is man. I gotta re restrain myself sometimes. It's so <laughs> So great. I hear you. I'm a huge fan of Cuban food and Cuban music. And yeah, I just um, got to get myself back out there. I'll do that. Awesome, Sarah. I'll do that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fausto. I really appreciate you being here today. Um, and we'll look forward to your new music in a month. Man, I'm, I'm ready. All Thank right, you, Sarah. Let's do it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'll see you soon. Okay. Take okay. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.